Uh, I am Hanbyeol Jo. I'm like first time at the NACIUS actually, and the first person at PCD Day. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, very honored and also very nervous. <laughs> so, as I said, I am Hanbyeol Jo. I work at Mapsen. I make tools to help web mapping more accessible and easy. So if you're doing like web mappings and have opinions, we should talk later. But we are gonna talk about different things today. So before working at Mapsen, I was at the intersection of programming and somewhat visual art. Passing through the great journey of trying this and that, I got interested in digital fabrications. I really liked the idea that I can interpret the pixels into real life objects using some tools like laser cutter, 3D printer, and even using some paper folding skills. So how to fabricate with the maps was obviously one of my biggest interests when I first started working at Maps. And I'm going to share what I've been making and the tools that I've been developing to make the process easier. Okay, that was brief introduction. Let's get into details. I want to start with talking about vector tiles, the main ingredients for fabrication for me. Vector tiles seems to be a hot issue recently, so you probably already heard about this before. I will try to rephrase it so it fits more into this context. So lots of interactive maps, like Sleepy Maps, use tiles to display the data to users. Raster tiles usually convert the data as an image form at the server-side level and send those images to browsers. On the other hand, vector tiles contains instruction on what can be drawn, rather than something already drawn and styled. So vector tiles are usually great for people who want to have more freedoms about drawing, styling of maps. Since vector tile only has what to draw in it, it needs a rendering engine which knows how to read the data from it and also knows how to draw that data on the browser. As vector tile gets popular because of its incredible flexibility, there are many awesome rendering engines out there, including Tangram from Mapsen. And using this flexibility of vector tiles, we can render the tiles in a way that can help fabrication. Then question would be, what would be ideal rendering form? We want the final result to be outside of screens, but the data still needs to be transformed into somewhat convenient format for the fabrication. Since lots of digital fabrication tools accept vector graphic format as an input so that it knows where to move its mechanical arms, it would be ideal if it can convert the data into a vector graphics format. So I use D3 as my midway renderer. D3 is like data visualization library. It does like a lot of things related to data that I can probably cover everything. But one thing that I needed from D3 is that it takes the data and then spits out the expected visualization in SVG format. SVG is a shorthand for scalable vector graphics. It is XML-based vector image format. It looks like HTML. It has a, like a lot of charming points on broader context. It can be styled with CSS, follows web standards, many browsers support it. And since it is a vector format, like we don't have to make like a lot of process only to differentiate the size. And SVG can be generated or edited through text editor. You can like type it in a very similar way that you're gonna type HTML. Also, since it is vector image format, it can be edited through doing software such as Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape. So with D3 and SVG Power, I made SVG, sorry, I made SVG Exporter, which fasts a tile and converts them into SVG format. 
This is how it looks like, and I can choose the area that I want to explore with the map, and I can choose how much details I want by selecting zoom level. Higher zoom level, you get more details. And I can also choose what features I want to be in SVGs by clicking those like checkboxes. After the user requests the tile, the exporter converts requested coordinates to Mercator tile numbers, then it fetches the corresponding tiles from the server, which are going to be final SVG. Yeah, SVG can be open in the browser directly too. Also, the exporter we source the fetch data into each layer so that the result SVG can be styled more easily. Like you can disable or enable each layer, or you can even style like sub layer, like major rows from rows layer, different different from other layers. So this is result SVGs of New York City with layer of rows, water, boundaries. As SVG can be edited in drone software, I just opened the Illustrator and whipped up like really quick style, gave some like pink color to rows and gave some like purpley color to the water. You can explore pretty detailed area in large scale with SVG exporter if you are patient enough, it takes time. <laughs> So this is a road of Seoul at like zoom detail level like 15. I really like looking at it. So now we have SVGs that we can use as input. We can finish with the choice of fabrication tool. For this example, I use a pen plotter. And as you can see, it is not really fast process. So I prepare like timeless video. It is drawing like Bay Area of San Francisco. And I made some cars for my friends with that. Ta-da. <laughs> and since vector graphics don't lose resolution, they are like used for print makings often too. For example, LA Times has been making web maps maker to easily generate the snapshots of maps for their articles. They wanted to use the map maker for their printing public, print publication too. But printing requires a vector format, so they adopted some parts of the SVG exporter using it for printing. <coughs> okay, we've talked about 2D fabrication so far. Now let's talk about 3D fabrication. We don't really have to start from scratch for 3D because since we already have like 2D vector graphics, all on, we only need to extrude it with high data, which is often embedded in vector tiles. I use another JavaScript library called 3 to do this. It is 3 is like easy to use wrapper for all those WebGL 3D magics happening in browser. 3 offers various kinds of render, importantly including SVG, which means that we can toss the SVG with some height data to 3, then it would extrude it into 3D geometry. So I made the OBJ exporter. You can see there are some different design decisions for this exporter. You can request one tile at a time and you can navigate through the map on the right bottom. Once the 3D geometry is drawn in the scene, 3 can parse the objects and return it in an OBJ format, which is 3D geometry format we can use for like 3D printers or CNC. When we pass the height data to the exporter, we can tweak some heights to help fabrication process easy. This one is normal height ratio that I usually go for. But you can see that this one is a very compressed. The this technique can be useful depending on what kind of fabrication you're going for. I will get more details into later. We can see some nice prints from Shapeway. These are also from Shapeway. Okay, those were nice prints, but we can take one more step for more fun. Let's say I always had this image in my mind that I am shaking an expensive whiskey glass, which has Empire State Building shaped ice melting in the whiskey. Not a metaphor of anything, but to do that, we can print out the Empire State Building from the exporter. I just use a maker boat from our office. 
And once we got the print, we can get a silicone mold out of it. I recommend you to do this process with somebody who knows how to deal with silicone because it's a little bit more than just pouring silicone. But anyway, if everything works out great, we can get a mold like this, which is gonna make the ice like this. Well, I couldn't really get the whiskey shot. It melts really quick. <laughs> this is another mold, Gromercy area of New York City. I you can see that I compressed the height of the buildings a lot for this one because I want to make chocolate out of it. Chocolate is a very fragile material, so you can imagine that all the tall buildings are just gonna break when the mold is taken out if they have distinctive heights. So I compressed the height a lot for a fragile material like that and also made very thick base, earth base layer. I sometimes like think digital fabrication sounds like way too digital. It sounds like I'm just gonna run the script and it's just going to be done. But there are things that I have to care about eyes out of the screens and honestly, those like take more efforts and more times for me. Pen plotters like can be shaken if somebody touches the desk it is on and 3D printing process is still not that fast. And I had to print out like more than five prints to make the silicone mold that is not going to break all the chocolates while I take the things out. And I also tried various kinds of chocolate to figure out what works the best, then uh, I don't have much complaints about that though. <laughs> but I think it is part of charm. When I'm so used to pixels as a standardized medium, looking at the real life material that needs time to understand and think about how to transform digital data fitting into it is quite charming, gives me different perspective to see the maps. Well, this is all my talk. I'm developing tools that I use in the presentation in very, very slow phase. And also I've been using it for mostly for myself. So it'll be really exciting if my tools can be used for your creativity too. That's all, thank you.